name is Keith Pereira. I am a vascular interventional radiologist at St. Louis University in St. Louis, Missouri. I am uh, going to talk to you guys about a few things about interventional radiology. So what is interventional radiology? Uh, I think it's uh, one of the newest specialty in medicine, one of the fastest growing specialty in medicine. That is a combination of uh, imaging and intervention. Uh, I remember the good old days uh, back in the medical school when, you know, everything was based on clinical examination. You know, people should go with the stethoscope and, you know, try to listen to various parts of the body or feel various parts of the body. Almost everything has been replaced by uh, in imaging now. For example, you do a CAT scan for something that happens in the brain uh, without having to guess. Um, so imaging has become a very important part of medicine right now. And uh, can you imagine the fact that you can combine being able to see inside the body and doing procedures inside the body without having to open up the body. Uh, that is what interventional radiology is and this defines the next era of uh, medicine wherein you use minimally invasive tiny tools through a small pinhole in the wrist, uh, get a catheter into the area that you want to treat and treat it. Uh, we can treat cancer in the liver, we can treat fibroids in the uterus, we can treat enlarged prostates, we can Treat stroke, go and open up blood flow to the brain when you have stroke. Go and open up blood flow to the legs and prevent amputation. Um, and block the blood flow in cases of bleeding without having to actually open up the body. Uh, so this is what interventional radiology is and it's the next frontier of medicine right now. Don't breathe down blue. Don't breathe down blue. Don't breathe down blue. Why I chose interventional radiology? Well, um, going back a little bit, I did my training in India. I did my medical school in India. And after that, you know, radiology was one of the biggest and hottest fields in medicine at that time. Um, I chose radiology because I wanted to see what others could not see. Uh, and so I did my training in radiology, in diagnostic radiology. I worked for a couple of years in attending the diagnostic radiologist. And then I, uh, I was very impressed by what I could do beyond just diagnosing a condition. So I would see, for example, a blood flow problem in the leg and I would just diagnose it and tell the referring physician, hey, there's a problem uh, and the referring physician to fix it. I thought I wanted to do something more than that. I thought I wanted to fix the problem uh, by offering the patient innovative ways of fixing the problem without the need for surgery. Uh, and that's what got me into inter interventional radiology. I subsequently uh, trained in interventional radiology. I did my fellowships uh, and I became board certified in interventional radiology. Uh, and, and now I'm practicing 100% interventional radiology, doing high-end procedures, uh, doing the best I can do for my patients and uh, enjoying every beat, bit of the day uh, when I'm doing my doing interventional radiology. Uh, as they say, uh, you know, a lot of people speak about burnout in medicine, right? And it is a real thing. Uh, I often say uh, there's a solution and interventional radiology is one of them. Um, I feel as, uh, as excited about the field, as excited about my day when I wake up at 6.30 a.m. in the morning as much as I did uh, 10 years ago when I was training. Uh, and that's because of the wide array of procedures that we offer interventional radiology, right from uh, the head stroke to the limbs, uh, peripheral arterial disease to cancer to childbirth to fibroids to pain to trauma to so many things. Uh, I think the wide array of, of, of procedures uh, is, is, is something that helps, keeps you going. Uh, also, it is very innovative. Uh, every day we come up with new ways of doing things, new procedures, uh, and a lot of other things that are evolving over time. So it's very exciting. Uh, it's, it's a great field to be in. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the best fields to be in right now. What is the future of IR? Uh, imaging and intervention again. So. Imaging and intervention is going to take over medicine, right? Because everybody's using imaging and intervention to do procedures, to do surgeries, to do everything. So I see the future only growing from here. It's, 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 it's the, the field is about to explode in the next decade with new minimally invasive interventions. We're talking about interventional oncology, which is almost a thing of the past. When I began my training 10 years ago, it was new. Now we're talking of musculoskeletal IR treating. Uh, osteoarthritis of the knee, frozen shoulder in the shoulder. We're talking about weight loss procedures called bariatric embolization. We're talking about so many newer procedures, interventional pain, palliative procedures through pinhole, minimally invasive approach. Uh, so these are some of the new evolving 
uh, indications and procedures for IR uh, that is making IR sort of step beyond what medicine and surgery are now. It's next level medicine, next level surgery. So it is the most exciting field in a specialty and growing beyond beyond imagination. Um, what typically involves a clinic day and what kind of patients do you see? Uh, so, uh, you know, IR clinic has become one of the main things that we do now because we need to see patients before uh, to see whether they are, they are eligible for the procedure or after to see whether they've done well from the procedure. But besides that, uh, me, for example, in this clinic today, I see a lot of vascular disease, uh, arterial disease, venous disease. And some of these patients may not even need a procedure, but they need to follow up with us because we need to optimize them for medical therapy, maybe prescribe celostazole, prescribe some drugs to help with the blood flow. Uh, and also, you know, smoking cessation, uh, optimize their medical therapy, for example, you know, high dose uh, statins. So we do follow up these patients even if they don't get procedures. So this is comprehensive vascular care which you do throughout the life of these patients. Uh, in the clinic, we primarily sit in our offices for some time or in the, in the back room. Uh, we talk about patients. So uh, Vidul uh, is, is, is worked up all the patients for today. This is his great cheat <laughs> <laughs> which is very well done. Uh, we talk about patients, present patients, go through, do a chart review. Uh, and now uh, we have, we have see, we are, we are going to see the patient now. So we're going to go to their room and examine the patient, get a history, uh, maybe do an ultrasound of the leg sometimes, maybe do an ultrasound of the prostate or the fibroids, do an ABI uh, or review the ABI, uh, do a Doppler check and all those things and see the patient uh, for vascular disease. So let's go. Of course, there's no patient here, but usually you see the patient here. This is like any... Uh, clinic that we, you know, any other clinical specialty has. We are a clinical specialty now, so we see the patient. Uh, you know, we, I often have an ultrasound in the room to do the ultrasound or the top of the legs. Uh, we do that, talk to the patient of symptoms, and come up with a plan. You know, does he need to get medical therapy? Does he need to get an intervention? Uh, and uh, and this is what we do in clinic. And you know, the medical students who are with us, we do, for example, they do uh, a thorough physical examination of the patient. Uh, he will also do Doppler checks and whatever is relevant for the patient in this situation.